This could be one of the most important factors in your golf game, and it's something which so many people don't think about, and even more people get wrong. Hi everyone, my name is James Robinson, welcome back to Get Good at Golf. On this channel, we aim to tell you get good at golf just one day at a time, Monday right through to Friday. Yes, that took me five goes to get. We are out here in Dallas filming at the moment, guys. We're gonna talk about ball position today, because ball position is something which so many people tend to get wrong. I've got a mid iron here, I've got a seven iron, and we're gonna show you just how much difference ball position can make within the ball flight, even with the same golf swing. So I'm gonna hit one first off where the ball wants to be with a seven iron. So I've got the ball just forward of center. I've got a tiny bit of forward shaft limb because I know I'm gonna try and compress that ball into the turf. I'm gonna try and take loft off dynamically. That is why I have the ball there. That's why I don't have it further forward. We'll show you what happens with that in just a moment's time. I've got 156 yards. So let's just try and play a nice normal shot. My normal shot would be a tiny bit of a fade. So that's a nice golf swing for me. It started left, it's fading back. Should finish quite close actually. Let's see where this goes. Oh, Chris. Oh, it's just gone a tiny bit long. But if we look at the numbers now, you'll see I've come across that by 5.6 degrees. I've had 87.9 club speed. Ball speed resulting at 118, carry 161, which is what I like, 165 total. So as you can see guys, 3.6 club path to the left, so I'm coming across it ever so slightly, which is normal with an iron. You do want to hit down on it, you do want to get that control element. Club speed of 88, ball speed 118, carrying 161, which is around the number that I like. Again, across it 3.6, face to path 1.6. So all those numbers are very nice. That is what I would like. That's what I do like to hit kind of nice straight shots with a little bit of fade on. Now, if we move this back, and I'm gonna try and make the same golf swing here. I'll move it back so it's it just inside the right foot. You'll see a totally different ball flight, totally different numbers on here. But funnily enough, this is one of the big things that we see people do wrong when playing golf. So if I go same golf swing, I've tried to hit the same shot, I've left it out ever slightly to the right. There's a huge reason for that. I've actually struck it really well. I may even have struck that better, but now looking at that, club head speed is down, ball speed is down, carries up, it's gone a lot lower, total is up as well. The club path was now on the inside and the face was left open. I've done really well there to keep that club path at 0.4. Usually you would see a lot higher number than that if that ball moves back in the stands because the club starts to work a little bit down, a little bit from the inside, and you generally get steep on it as well. So you start to see shots like this one where it's a really low moving shot. If you can square the club face up, you'll see that draw that brings it back onto the flag there. And again, lower club head speed, 83, carrying at 146. That one didn't quite get it. Again, that club path is now moving inside. The more you see that move back, the more generally you'll see your club path move away from exactly where you want it to go. Generally, when the ball moves further back and further back, you start to move away from what you're happy with with your swing path. The club hasn't actually reached its low point, so you can start to see missed shots like that. You can start to see bad strikes like that one. And then we do start to see if the ball moves forward, then you start to see this kind of shot here where you just lose control of the club face. Swing path is generally going to start to go a little bit more on the outside. That one's on the path, look at that one. And this is where you can see club path 9.2 with a face ever so slightly open. And that's not what we want to see. Again, we've lost club head speed there and we've lost total carry distance. So again, the ideal place here, and Chris is going to give us a few drills where we can start to see that perfect setup. For a mid iron, I want to see a nice set position here, just forward of center, handle forward. And from there, you can start to play better golf. So guys, if you're thinking about your ball position, we need to make sure that we are consistent with that. We need to have a set routine for you to get the ball position exactly where we want. So throughout the bag, it is going to change and there is videos here on Get Good At Golf, which will talk you about where you need to have your ball position, depending on what iron you are using and how far you are away from the hole. But like James mentioned there, if my ball position sneaks back, my club is still working down. So that club is still working down. It's not reached its low point. So the path is going to be going out to the right. Very much we see there is you'll just hit it straight right. You might match the club face up with the path that goes straight right. And you start to think, oh, I've blocked that one. I must have left the face way open. Oh, well, what I'll do is I'll just close the face. If we then close the face from there, all I'm going to then see is that path's still going to work out to the right, but I'm going to hit a low left. So this is where you have to be consistent with your routine and get the ball position exactly where we want. If we then get the ball position, like James mentioned earlier, forwards, 
we open up both sides of the golf course. We'll see those kind of people who pull a few to the left, and then they feel like, right, I've just got to leave it open a little bit more. We start to drag the handle, and we might see the dreaded shot that would hit the side of the simulator not right here. Not, that one, not this one. This one's massive. Well, that is very true. So we don't want to be doing that. We don't want it to be there. We don't want to be guiding that and trying to take some loft off. We just want to be able to get that where we need it. So the best way for us to do this is when you're on a golf course, a lot of people will start behind the golf ball. You'll visualize your shot and you'll be picking your target. What you then want to do is pick something just in front of the ball. So something maybe a foot in front, it might be an old divot, it might be a leaf, it might be a feather, it could be anything. And that's what we want to focus on. We then want to come in, we want to set the club face first, get that square to my target, and then from here, build my stance. It's very unlikely that you would make a small step there and a large step there. We wouldn't see that happen. It'd be very obvious that that ball position is back. So once we're in the middle here, I've set my club face, I'm in the middle, we're gonna take a small step to the right, a small step to the left, and that's now into that position where I've got the ball positioned just ahead of center like James mentioned. If you are somebody who has a ever so slight forward shuffling, which would be good, just ahead of your zipper, from here, I'm now in a strong position to take this club to the top, bring it back down into impact, and start to get into this position here, which is nice and strong. We're compacting that golf ball, and we know mainly that that golf ball is going to start online. You'll see that he's straight at the flag. It's not going to be the first hole in one I've ever got. Still waiting for the first hole in one. But you'll see there that started online. Club path nice and neutral. There the face was ever so slightly closed. But you can see the main thing that does with a good ball position is get my club path to 0.4. That's nice and neutral. Then if we have any kind of curvature, we know that has, that is coming even from the club face being open or closed. We can work with that. We can start to think about that on the golf course. If you know that your club path is neutral, if you go for a lesson, you're more than likely going to use something like a Trackman or a GC Quad, and they're going to let you know what your club path is. Once that is neutral, we can then think about how we get the ball curving in a certain way that we want or don't want. If we are getting that slice, we know that we are returning that club face a little bit open, and as a result, we want to figure out where that is coming from. Is that coming from your grip? Do you have a weak grip? we need to figure that out. But to get this ball starting online, we need that ball position. And we always come back to, we're not reinventing the wheel here. We're making sure that we get a sound setup. If we've got a ball position that's consistent for every club in the golf bag, we can return that loft square, we can get the ball starting online, and that's one massive thing we need in golf. And if you do that, guys, that's gonna help you get good at golf.